transformation is finally at the summary video. Now you'll know where we get everything that I come up with here. So make sure you watch the other videos. Okay, first of all, vertical and horizontal translations. For any function y equals f of x, this means any function, y is any function of f of x, we have y equals f of x minus h plus k. Okay? This, of course, is our up-down, and this is our left-to-right. So, for example, translating it uh, uh, left 2, so that's minus 2, and translating it uh, down 5, which is minus 5, would make this function look like y equals f of x minus negative 2 plus negative 5. Or in normal terms, negative minus, sorry, subtracting a negative is like this. Well, that would just be minus 5, okay? This is why it appears to be a positive, because our function looks like this, our formula, okay? So, there you have it. This is a movement to the left of two units and down five units. All right. That's vertical and horizontal translations. The second thing is reflections. Okay. Here we have y equals f of x. Drawing a picture always helps. I like this. Okay. So we know that we can go y equals negative f of x or y equals f of negative x. Um, really simple to think about, okay? Here, we're negating the x value. You draw a picture, a positive x becomes a negative x. We're negating it. Or a negative x, when you negate a negative x, it becomes a positive x. Either way you do it, you're reflecting over the y-axis, okay? So, a reflection, when you have the negative sign here, reflect over y axis. But now you understand why. It's not just some magical mystery. Magical mystery to, okay, so this one, we're not messing with x, therefore we must be messing with the y value. Well, on our picture, you take any y and you, uh, you change the sign, you negate the sign, there you have it. Or you have a negative y and you negate the sign and it becomes a positive. Either way you do it, you're reflecting over the x-axis. But now you know why this is a reflection over the x-axis, okay? So that's your summary of reflection. Anything else I need to describe about that? Oh, yes. This other thing right here. F inverse x, okay? Remember, this is when we had uh, this line here, okay? That's this line here. Uh, any point that was right here, it's, it gets reflected over top of this graph here. And what happened is that our, what we had in our initial point x, y, in the, in the reflection would be y, x. Like uh, 3, 2 would become 2, 3. as you go into the inverse. Okay, so from regular function to the inverse function, any given point, x, y, would be reversed. Okay? No, okay, so that's, that's the idea with this one here. Uh, anything else I need to uh, put on that? Nope, nope. All right, next video, I'll do the summary on the vertical compression. What do we add for time here? 416? I'll do it right now. vertical compression or an expansion. We can have a horizontal compression or expansion. Okay, every stretch will be one of those a vertical, one, one of these four options here. What do I want to say here? Okay, here's what we have, okay? There's some factor there, there's some factor there. If this is our factor, 
okay? We are dealing with the x. Okay? If, uh, if this factor gets larger than zero, uh, 1, sorry, if k is larger than 1, whatever's happening is just like slope, it's getting steeper. But because we're dealing with x, we're dealing with the horizon. Horizon is the, the x-axis. So if we're dealing with this, it's a horizontal something, and it's getting steeper, we're compressing the horizon. Okay? So it's a horizontal compression by a factor watch this, of 1 over k. And this thing here, okay, um, sorry, before I get to this thing here, uh, if uh, k is between 0 and 1, then it's a, where our slope is decreasing, so we're expanding the horizon. The mountain tops are co collapsing. Then we have a horizontal expansion by a factor of 1 over k. Okay? And uh, if k is negative, then we have, I'm not going to write it down. If k is negative, then we have, uh, sorry, ooh, I'm doing the wrong thing. If this value is negative, okay? What that implies, this negative sign is dealing with the x value. It's turning the x into a negative x. And I've done this diagram millions of times before already. That means there's a reflection in the y-axis. So if k is negative, there's a reflection in the y-axis. Okay. That's dealing with k. So that's the horizontal stretch that we've done. We've showed that. Okay, now for vertical. Now the vertical, okay, so A, okay, um, A is, if, it's, if, if we don't write anything, it's just 1, right? So if A is uh, bigger than 1, think of like a slope, right? There's, I'm going to spit on the board, okay, uh, the slope gets steeper. We know we're talking about vertical now, so when the vertical slope, uh, when the slope gets steeper, it's like we're expanding to the sky faster. Okay, that's what I want you to think about. So we know that um, when a is greater than 1, we are dealing with vertical, and it's going to be an expansion. Okay? If a is um, between 0 and 1, for example, 1 third, well, this, if you were going to draw a slope of 1 third, it would be flat. Good old slope comes to save the day. So what we're doing is we're compressing. We're vertically compressing down, as I've described many times. Okay, by factor of what? Uh, factor of one third. Factor of one third. It's the actual number here. Um, oh, sorry. If a is greater than one, like uh, if it was, if a equals three, then it's a factor of three. Okay. And then last but not least, if uh, if a is negative, we're messing with the y values. We're negating our y values. So point up here. We'll go down there. We're negating our y. So what that means is a reflection over this axis. Uh, so there's a reflection over x axis. But now you got to see the reasoning behind it. This video is the summary of these uh, stretches and all that stuff. Any questions, give me a holler. Gotta know this stuff.